Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Do some repotting today. Um, both Sologenies. One's a biggie, so we're not working in the kitchen today. So sorry, no kitchen time. We're back to working in the um, in the grow room on the workbench, which is probably the best place to do this sort of thing, quite honestly. Um, anyway, uh, normal sort of preparations. I've got my jug with my RO water and some um, seaweed extract to give these plants a little bit of a kick, whatever you want to call it, a soak they're going to get anyway, one way or the other. My scissors are soaking in the 70% um, rubbing alcohol because I'm working on one more than one plant. They were put away sterile, but if I work on one plant and move to the next one, they won't be. And damage is more likely to be done when you're cutting something. That's more likely to be the way things spread. It is possible for things to spread through water, but it's very rare. Um, so uh, anyway, that's what we're up to. And of course we have the essential coffee. So I'll uh, swing the camera around, well lower it down, so that we can see what we're doing. And um, we'll make a start. To say first job as always is to get things out of the pot and see what we're dealing with. This downwards a bit, yeah, somewhere like that. I don't like getting too far away, otherwise, you know, you can't really see what's going on. So this is Cilogeny. What was Orcratia um, is now Nitida, and it's the variety Super. Yeah, I doubt if that will focus, but um, if it does, there you go. So that's what this one is. This one's getting repotted, not really because the media is breaking down but because it's got a rotten pseudo bulb and the latest growths are climbing. Right, so it has a good reason to be repotted. Um, it was also potted in the middle of the pot, so it's grown over to the edge far quicker than it would have done if it had been planted on the edge, like what I do. So, let's see what we've got. you have to excuse Mojo, he's... Uh, a bit upset at the moment, he's just been to the vets for a checkup and to have his claws clipped and some vet quality flea treatment because the stuff you buy in the shops is, I was going to say next to useless, but it's actually useless. It's a total waste of money. And the vet agrees. And the vet that I go to doesn't charge a fortune. Well, let's put it this way. Um, Hannah, where she lives, it won't be happening again, um, she's been paying £40 for the vet to look at her cat. That's before they do anything. That's just to book an appointment to get, you know, a cat looked at. Now, I've just had my cat a thorough check over, um, weight, eyes, ears, heart checked, all that sort of stuff. It had all his claws clipped nicely. And in addition to that, flea treatment given to him, save me doing it, and two more treatments to follow on. Total bill, £45. So Hannah is just going to the wrong vet. Right, so back end of this plant's coming off, back to here. Yeah, it might even just break off. Yeah, it'd be better to cut it. As we've got the scissors here, so that's the two rotten bulbs and the next one along that could possibly be heading the same way. That gives me a much easier plant to work with. These are rotten and look horrible. They're actually hollow. They've completely gone. So there's no sort of manky liquid or anything in there. And that's still leaving me with a climbing plant. So what are we going to do? The roots are not very good, actually. Um, not very good at all. But what there is, we will deal with. I'm wondering whether this would be... So it's actually got two leads. I'm wondering whether this would be just better potted up as two separate plants. It's this pseudo bulb here that's the problem, but if I take it off, I will have two plants. It's the bulb that's holding the two leads together. 
and I would still have a climbing plant even if I took it off. So I think what we'll do is we'll leave it, we'll clean the sheaths up and that's where the uh, roots should be coming out from and they'll be totally stuck inside these because they're quite woody, they feel quite firm, the roots could get entirely stuck in those. So we'll get some of those out of the way. I don't need to get everything off, I just need to clear back to the base of the pseudo bulbs really, that's where the roots are coming from. And they seem to have uh, stalled a bit. You being a misery are you? Mm. Yeah, there's a couple of his claws were um, pinching his pads, so when they were cut, he hissed. <laughs> I love it when he does that. He's a very docile cat, basically. He's, um, chances of him actually hurting anyone are very, very slim. But you want to see the vets move when he hisses at them. They soon back up. <laughs> uh, right. See, I'm not happy. The base of that pseudo bulb looks a bit grim. Do you know? I think I'm. I'm, I'm just going to. I'm going to take the bull by the horns and cut these back bits off because I'm not happy with the way it's growing vertical and I'm not happy with the base of this this rhizome doesn't look good so uh, I think I'm going to take the ball by the horns and take it off and that does give me two plants and they will take a while to grow on now but um, we've got the basis of a plant here nice new growth um, it could be a flower spike I suppose but it's more likely to be a growth and these roots aren't too bad, they're, they're not good, they're not too bad. And then if we do the same on this side, take the old part off. So you've still got a climbing plant, it's, virt it's almost vertical, but we do have leaves on this part of the old plant. So I'm just going to have to plant this at an angle, I'm just going to have to put this in at an angle. But again, that's not very good roots, is it? I mean, there are signs of roots starting to grow here. But um, I expected more from that, I must admit. So we'll give that a soak, get that to absorb some of this uh, seaweed and see what that does for it. Right, now we've got the big one. This is the Cylogeny moriana and it's just the ordinary species. Well, I say ordinary, it's just the species. It's because I've got um, a variety of this, a named variety as well. So. I have to refer to this one as the ordinary one. And let's hope we don't get so much of a problem with this one. Alright, let's see what we got then. Got lots of new growths on this, so in theory it should be pushing new roots out. If not doing it now, it should be doing it soon. Now this has got a good root system, I'm happy with this. But again, we've got, you know, things that have been buried don't do so well. Oh, this is good bark. So I'm trying to handle the plant relatively gently. I'm only teasing here, I'm not ripping and pulling, I'm just teasing. This is pretty good bark. Um, this is being repotted more for the position of the plant in the pot. And you might have to go back in the same pot. I'm reluctant to pot in black pots. The professionals do, I know, but um, I like to see my roots, see what's going on. I can see when problems occur and I also can see how wet the media is without having to rely on the weight of the pot. Let me just get my scissors back in. So I can see a rhizome that's going to have to come off. This one here, this uh, pseudo bulb here is going to have to come off. Um, serves no purpose and it's starting to, starting to rot. This little one here I'm going to try and take off. I just hope it doesn't separate the uh, plant. Now I must admit I was expecting this to be two plants and it's not, it's one. So this is unusual for Burnham's to actually give you a large division like this. 
And you normally split them up smaller than this and pop them up ready to sell on. So they take, you know, I mean they've got um, this particular plant and this particular species, they'll have dozens of these, all huge, sat around and every now and again they take some and split them up, put them into smaller pots, label them up and then put them in the um, sales area or the display area that's part of the main nursery that's open to the public. A lot of the large specimen type plants are in baskets hung up in the um, private area. Now you can see here we've got some new roots coming out here so those can be encouraged. They're coming from the base here, there's more showing. Um, it's got good new growths this one so it should get going okay. Um, again is it one plant or is it two? You know. <laughs> sort of think about these things. Why won't you come off? You're only a silly little sheath. Right, let's get this um, bit of this rhizome cut. Get this old part of the plant off. And this little rotten pseudo bolt here. I hope it just comes off on its own and doesn't take anything with it. difficult this one. Pretty awkward. Yeah I thought that was going to happen. The piece of the plant it was attached to has come off as well. It was on a lead basically so it's come off. So we do have a little plant to plant up. Right. You see again we've got a sloping plant. If you look at the vertical state of here to plant that like this with these new growths on the surface the back end of the plant would be buried. So it's going to have to go over at an angle like that if I wish to maintain the size of the plant. Um, I'd be taking leaves off but then I've got three strong new growths pushing on which would double the size of the plant. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the back end off. Tidy that to uh, break up. Now, with taking that part of the plant off, virtually all the old manky roots have come off as well. What we're left it with is the decent roots round the edge of the best part of the plant. That is now a nice plant to plant on. That's a good plant. Um, this piece. And see, this is a new growth but it hasn't pushed any roots out. Now it's going to rain again, but just for a change of course. We haven't had any rain for so long. I'm not sure that's worth putting in there. I don't want a separate pot. Not See, in fact, this is the bit of the plant that's been causing me an annoyance because this is grown out sideways. So the plant you know, in, you know, whichever way it goes, that will be wrong. So I'm not going to plant that. I'm going to leave that. So that's our plant to pot up. Nice plant. New roots coming out at the base of these um, growths. I'm just going to trim these sheaths because they're, they're so strong I can't tear them. I'm going to have to snip them. Careful not to slip, snip the roots, obviously. But now the roots can get out and hopefully go straight down into the media. You can see all these little stumps here. They need to be able to get straight into the media. Right. Woo! Chucking things around. So hardly any of the old media left on there. I haven't been messing with the roots to any great extent. So it can be potted as it is. These are all fixed to the plant. They're not loose. And there's new ones coming. So that should grow on quite quickly now. So we'll pop that in there and give it its soak while I have a clear up. <laughs> and he just fits in the jug. Leave that to soak for a bit along with the other bits. Right, I will have a clear up, find some suitable pots and as usual I'll be back. Right, let's see what we can do then. This is the um, oldest bark I've got. It's classed as medium, it's incredibly dusty, um, but what it is good for 
and crocking. <laughs> and uh, that's what I'm using it up for now. I'm not mixing it in with anything else. It's incredibly dirty. It's just for crocking. And then we can, uh, we can get that out of the way now. It'll be gone soon, there's not much left. And that'll be one bag less to look after. So that's that. So that's our two pots. And then the main mix is going to be small bark. This is Orchiata bark. Um, I personally won't be buying any more of this. I've got nothing against it. Um, but effectively there's only one place I can get it from. And um, it's become rather expensive. And according to others, not me, its quality has gone down such that it doesn't really warrant the higher price anymore. It did once. It's once upon a time this was the best stuff there was, without question. Well, it's come into question now. So that's small bark. Um, I'm going to put some medium in with that. This is the first time I've used this. This is the, this is the stuff I got at the uh, show a while back. Just to give it a bit of body, so we'll mix that in and then we'll get some perlite. And that bag I just put down promptly fell over all over the carpet. Luckily it's dry. Now this perlite might be getting to the end of its uh, life. Now there's still enough left that I can get hold of the uh, pieces without too much dust. Soon there will just be dust left, or more dust than pieces. By giving it a shake, the pieces come to the top and the dust sinks to the bottom, so I'm still able to get some out of this tub but soon I'll be moving on to the other tub. If you mess with perlite, um, you're better off wearing a mask, quite honestly, because the dust does get in the air. It won't do your lungs any good at all. <coughs> will that do? Yeah, that'll do. I think what's left will probably end up getting chucked. I do have another tub ready to go. It's not like I'm out of the stuff. And the new tub is a bit bigger than that one as well. Yeah, Mojo's not settling. Last couple of times he's gone to the vet and had his uh, claws done. He's come back and within half an hour it's like back to normal as though nothing's happened. But this time he's not settling. So he's a bit more upset this time. And it could be the new flea stuff. Um, it is smelly, you know, but I mean this is vet strength stuff. See, now he wants to go out and I can't really let him out. Um, if he gets his... Um, the area where the fleece drops have been put wet, it might degrade how they work, so he's going to have to stay in. It's raining anyway, I mean if it stops raining he can go out, but at the moment it's raining so he's going to have to stay in. Cross your legs. He only wants to go out to play, you know, he's... Uh, well, it's, it's, you know, I'm planting a piece here with virtually no roots. But that back bulb has got two leaves. Um, it's got a new lead. And this one's got leaves and a new lead. Now we'll just pop them up. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We'll just pop them up and see how they go. So I'm going to have to plant them at an angle. And I think what I'll do is I'll plant them both at the same angle next to each other with the two new growths at the front. So we will, <coughs> excuse me, I will just chuck some more media in there. I'm going to plant this quite deep. So what I've done now is I've put media around the plant. The plant's not where I want it yet, but as I move it into place, the media will hold it still. So I think about like that. 
And then if the front area of the plant does actually grow some roots, then this can be potted on in a year. You know, let these roots, uh, let these shoots grow, get some roots going, and then come back to the plant and pot it on. So the new growths are towards the edge of the pot. I can't get them any closer, uh, farther away from the edge of the pot, because I'm up against the back anyway. And this bulb's completely buried. You know, this, this is the problem with these. Um, anyway, that's all that one's going to get. I'll put the, put the old tag back in, there's nothing wrong with it. I should do a new one soon. So that's that, that'll just get watered now. And, and that's that one done. Uh, I need to, so I'm looking for somewhere to put it. I've got stuff all over the place here. Let's see if we can just put it there for now. Get rid of these um, empty pots down there. Right, now let's have a look at what we've got because we're now onto a big plant that I'm hoping to force into a very small pot. My theory shaking most of the moisture off. It's had a good soak. It's a single piece and I want it like that. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in the bottom and then I'm going to twist these roots in and the pot will be almost all roots. And hopefully the new roots will uh, carry on filling the pot. Just making sure the new growths are towards the back, uh, uh, middle of the pot. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting some media down the back of the plant, tapping it down so that it gets right down in. Then what I can do is push the plant back up against that media, leaving the new growths halfway across the pot. So they've got plenty of room to grow now. end up with some air gaps here I think. Consequences of wet roots. The media sticks to them. So I'm going to have to do some pressing down. I don't want lots of air gaps, not with the silogeny. So that's quite a bit of pressing down now. The, the plant is now quite firm. So all, we're going, all I'm going to do now is just top it up and I don't want it so full that when I water it all the bark comes out. So new growths sitting on the surface, older part of the plant pushed up against the back, and not too much with the air gaps. A lot of those roots are in the middle of the pot. And this is wobbling. We might have to put a stake in that. This is a very top heavy plant because of the enormous leaves. And I don't think pressing it down is going to get it firm enough to stay still. I don't want it wobbling around to any extent. So I think we need to find a place where a single stake will hold it still. I would think it would be that bulb there. So let's see what we can find. sort of point on it, sort of. And then I'm going to put that down there, up against that bulb, pushed in firm, and now I'm going to get a clip and clip that bulb to that. That will hold the whole plant still. Get my pot full of clips. And before anybody asks, where do you get them clips? Most of them came on plants that I bought. I didn't buy the clips. So I've acquired them by buying plants from various places, nurseries and the like, and they've come to me that way. So hopefully, there we go, that grabby clip's got that quite firm and the plant is now stable. So good stuff. Now I will have to rearrange the top of the uh, media now because it's moved the plant slightly. So. 
just put a bit more media in around those, the top of those new growths. And I'm finding small bits. So I'm not putting the large pieces directly under these new growths, I'm putting the small pieces so that the roots can get into something quickly. It's easy enough to do, you just brush the big bits out of the way and it leaves the small bits. Like that. So there we go, that can have the old label back in again as well. Nothing wrong with it. And that is really annoying me, so I'm going to cut it off. <laughs> it's just a sheath that wouldn't pull off. Right, so there we go. That is a quick repot for two Cylogenies. There are two more Cylogenies on the list to repot, but <laughs> my colour coding on my notes, these were in red, in other words, get on and do it, Roger. And then there are those that are in yellow, which need doing sometime soon, but they're not in a hurry. Some of those might not even get done till the end of the year. We shall see. But um, these two were down, let's get on and do them quite quickly. So uh, yeah, Cylogeny Natida ended up as two plants, two new growths, a real climber. But these two growths, they might even be flower spikes, but I don't think so. I've got just about room to grow and I want the roots from the front of this plant because it's got next to no roots at all before we can do anything sensible with this. If I get those roots, this can be potted on, yeah, so that it has got room to grow, but not yet, you know. If you're rescuing an orchid that's got very poor roots, don't put it in a big pot because there's no roots to use up the moisture that you're going to pour into that pot when you water it. You really, quite honestly, if you're rescuing a plant with hardly any roots, you want it in a small pot so that when you water it, evaporation can take care of quite a bit of that moisture until it gets some roots going. But don't go mad with the size of your pot. Um, so there we go, that's those two done and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.